Welcome, welcome. Hello, I'm just uh, going around to make sure that uh, everybody has the new Zoom link for our new meeting home. It's going to be exciting to see how many people follow the new link. <laughs> yeah. Post around on Discord and all the slacks and all the things. <laughs> I'm not sure exciting is the right word, but. Uh... Are our meeting notes still being held in our Google file? No, they are in the wiki. So if you go to uh, wiki.hyperledger.org and go to labs, there should be a Cardia page now. Just like, uh, you know, Aries or any of the other projects. Hi there. Hi, Kila. Kila. It took me a couple of tries to get in. I don't know if others might be having that experience. I'm going to post in the Discord channel. Keela, were you able to join the Discord channel? I was. I don't have the app, though. I have to get that security approved before I can download it. But I can go to the Discord. So can you see my Hyperledger Foundation screen? Sure can. Where are the notes in this? Oh, I was just getting there. <laughs> first, if you would log in in the upper right, that would be the first step with your LFID. And then go to labs at the in the top menu bar. I believe. And then in the left-hand uh, column, there's Cardia Lab, and that's our, our main page. So then if you go on the left-hand column one more time, um, there's 2022 Cardia meetings, or 2023, excuse me, whatever year we're in. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then um, we would just need to copy uh, one of the previous meetings and uh, make a new one. So um, I would open up maybe, yeah, 427. And then go to the three dots in the upper right hand corner and copy. And that's where it's going to live. So you say copy. And then you can um, edit the title. And you want to get rid of copy of, sir. Yeah, yeah, remo remove copy of. <laughs> um, and then delete or add as much as you'd like and then hit publish and then other folks can pop in as well or just hit publish now and then Keila can go in and edit or what have you everybody can edit now mm -hmm. the, the whole world can edit. well anybody with an LFID can edit <laughs> it's very exciting being in Hyperledger I know it's all here all the pieces are there and i know there's about four different conferences going on today right now <laughs> for, for the that pertain to the identity community and the open source community specifically um linux foundation uh open source summit in vancouver and european identity and cloud conference in berlin and uh there's a women in tech conference that's happening right now there's there's lots of things going on so um this might be one where we send out the recording to folks so they can see um, the conversation after the fact. That will be better than we had in the past. 
the attendance is going to be slower, but the support for the wiki pages and all that is a lot nicer. Mm -hmm. Sure is. Yeah, they they pay for all the memberships for all the things, which is really handy to have in a community like this. Um, and then I, what we could do is go through um, just at the top here, or maybe after the conversation, just grab like ten, you know, five minutes at the end of the call um, to walk through how to put the calendar invite, like where to find everything. But maybe just jump into the. I'll, I'll I'll hand it off to you, Keila. But that's something I had in the back of my mind. Whatever, wherever you think that best to have that conversation. Sure, sure. Um, and I believe we have a guest speaker today, if I'm not mistaken. But um, before we get into that, we can just go through our our sort of kickoff. And some of this will change. So this is probably the last time because we're just organizing ourselves with the new Hyperledger leading pages because they have. Um, some materials that we should be covering instead of our legacy stuff. But just to go through that, uh, welcome to the May 11th version of the Cardia Working Group. This is our first time fully transitioned over to uh, the support tools from Hyperledger. So if you've made it here, you've you've done well today. Good job. <laughs> um, it doesn't look like we have anybody straggling over in the other Zoom, so that's great. And I'll go ahead and cancel that moving forward. Uh, we are under the Linux Foundation antitrust policy, so that means we're not talking about very explicit business opportunities here um, or business dealings, dollar things, uh, et cetera. You can read that there, as well as the Cardia Code of Conduct, which will um, probably shift to as also leveraging a hyperledger code of conduct as well. In short, the goal is to be nice to everybody, to encourage participation um, and collaboration, and to ensure that everybody has a voice in this community. If you have any concerns, you can always reach out to Ken or myself as co-chairs, and we'd be happy to, to, um, to help. And if you have other issues, of course, you can reach out to hyperledger as well. Anything else to add before we jump into today's agenda? Well done. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. Um, and we're, we're, I, what you're seeing here is what we covered last time, which was a lot of the um, ins and outs of our formal transition over to Hyperledger. So uh, that is all in the meeting notes where you can find things. Uh, Helen's done a great job trying to summarize and communicate on all of that as well. Um, but again, if you've made it here, you've sort of, you're halfway there. <laughs> so nice work. All right, excellent. So I believe um, that we've got our a guest speaker for today. I don't know. Um, thanks, Helen, for putting that in the chat also. So organized. Um, I think uh, we may be good to jump into things. Do we have some, do we have a, anybody who wants to do a formal introduction of our speaker? Is there anybody who wants to introduce themselves? Ah, in thank you. That as well. Yeah. I'm Elizabeth Green, I'm a biomedical engineer and a certified forest steward. I've been attending Hyperledger meetings, uh, usually with climate accounting and healthcare for the past two years, over. Wonderful, very nice to meet you. And as this is our first recorded meeting in Hyperledger, I will go ahead and introduce myself as well. My name is Helen Garneau. I am, uh, I do marketing for Indicio. I support Cardia in a lot of the communications efforts. I'm also uh, chair of the Hyperledger Marketing Committee. Um, and I've uh, contributed in kind of fostering the, the, the growth of the community um, across Hyperledger um, projects, including Indian Aries over the last I don't know, five-ish years. Um, so happy to have Cardia here at Hyperledger and um, excited to see where the project goes and where the community takes us. <laughs> I'll chime in real quick. This is Steve Davis. I am Director of Technical Architecture at Shatskin Systems. So I work directly with Keela. And um, yeah, nice to meet you guys.
if nobody else, this is Ivan Erdos, H Care Health CTO. I'm really interested in your product. Welcome. I didn't catch the company name, Ivan. This is H Care Health. Like that. Ivan, is that correct? H C A N. Put it in the chat. Oh, perfect. That, that works. Thank you. And Elizabeth, I didn't I didn't I didn't get your company affiliation correctly either. It's because I don't have one. <laughs> Would you like any attribution next to your name? Negative. I will leave it at Elizabeth Green then. Anyone else today that would like to introduce themselves? Okay, and I think we are missing our guest speaker. So that is interesting. Um, I think Trevor had booked them. Um, so let me reach out to him. In the meantime, I can stall a little bit while we talk, while we walk through how to sign up for our calendar invites. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> that is an important topic I think we should cover, but let me just shoot Trevor a quick note, um, to see what's going on. Great. Great. And I'm just getting to the right place to help Sir Ken take notes. Also, you could also say that I'm kind of heading up the payer group right now. So it's Hyperledger Healthcare Payer Subgroup. Oh, uh, we meet on Monday, really early, 7 a.m. Pacific time. So you're all welcome to join. Uh, what we're studying is kind of, I call it for short, polluter payer healthcare. So it's basically a way to find out who's uh, causing the damage, healthcare damage, and turn them into payers for the healthcare damage over. Excellent. Very nice to hear all of that. Um, and if we're if you're Eastern like I am, 7 a.m. isn't so bad. <laughs> 7 a.m. Pacific. Okay, I sent Trevor a note, um, but I can go ahead and share my screen if that would be possible. Okay, let's see here if I do the right thing. I'm gonna share my desktop. Yeah, there we go. There we go. So, first off in Discord, um, if you join the Hyperledger Foundation Discord channel, which I'm not a super handy, Discorder quite yet. I'm kind of a noob. <laughs> um, but anyways, if you join the Hyperledger Foundation channel, and I think I can somehow share it in some capacity. Um, well, I put the chat, I put it in the chat earlier. Um, but you can find us if you scroll down. Do do do. Where they go to labs, I think. There's probably a search at the top too, if that oh. helps, because there's a lot. Yeah. Oh, oops. I don't know how to search. I'll just scroll. <laughs> um, basic fabric, not fabric, not indie, you know, Rojas Lab, special interest groups, community, there's a non creds, cacti caliper, firefly, sewing, transact, labs. Here we go. Here's labs. There's Cardia under labs. Um, I've pinned at the top here the mailing list. And then the calendar, which is kind of part of that group's IO uh, mailing list. And then this is the Discord channel and then the, the GitHub, um, the new GitHub where they moved everything over to. So if you get to Discord and you click on this mailing list, this is what you should see something like this. Um, 
I'm actually a, an administrator. So if you have any questions, please let me know. I can help you. Please feel free to reach out. Make sure you log in with your LFID up here in the upper right-hand corner. Um, here are all my groups. Um, but once you're on this mailing list, you should be able to uh, hit join groups, which will kind of be down here. There'll be a button down here right around archived messages um, that you should be able to click on to join. Um, from here, you can go to the calendar and you can see today, here's today's event. There are two separate events that you'll need to download and go through this process I'm about to show you. So one is for um, our second Thursday of the month call. And then the other one is for the th fourth Thursday of the month call. So you click on that item, you hit, hit download event, and then you should have that, that attachment. Um, so then what I do is I go to my calendar and you go to settings. Um, and then here, uh, if you have Google, sorry, this is for folks that do Google calendars because this is the tr most trickiest one because they don't love downloading these, these files. Um, but you go to there in, in your left-hand column um, to import, export, um, and then you can select your file, select your file, upload it, and then it should show up on your calendar. Um, but you want to do that again for both the second Thursday and the fourth Thursday event. Um, and then once you're on there, you'll get all the, they'll push you the reminders and um, you'll be able to ask questions on the Discord channel and your life should be a lot simpler. <laughs> um, so those are all of the, the notes I had. And then in terms of, you know, adding to the notes that, that Keela is working on right now, um, or, you know, that we, that we use during these meetings. Yeah. Again, just make sure you have, your, uh, you're logged into the wiki, the wiki.hyperledger.org, uh, with your LFID, and then you'll be able to also, uh, contribute to those meeting notes as well. Yep. And Keela just popped them into the chat. Um, but that's all the housekeeping. Um, I still don't see our speaker, um, that Trevor had booked and he, again, he's at a conference. So let me see if I can ping Heather, if she's with him. Okay, I think um, we can cover just one more housekeeping item, which is that the recordings of these are going to go to the Hyperledger um, YouTube channels, and it'll be in a specific playlist that you can subscribe to. So if you do miss any meetings, the meeting recordings will be much more available since they'll be on YouTube, which is super helpful, because I know that had been um, a lot of labor that went into managing our video, our meeting recordings. Um, and so now that that should be much more accessible. There's some auto magical things happening um, in the background to make that happen. So that's um, a great way in case you can't make it to a meeting. We do. Um, we probably should, for those of you who are attending for the first time, I guess one question I have is, would it be helpful for us to do uh, a high level walkthrough of what exists today? Do you feel like you have some awareness of that already? Uh, it would be really nice to hear from those of you who are attending for the first time if some of that context and background would be helpful for you. No need, go ahead. Okay, all right, excellent. Just sort of wondering if we should go back and do a, um, you know, what is Cardia, where, what is the, what's built, what are the, um, agents that we have available so far. All uh, right, let me see. Ken, we didn't come up with the backup agenda <laughs> in case our speaker wasn't coming. Um, but I think what we have laid out a couple of goals um, for what we're going to work on and be interesting. We have some healthcare people here. I personally am a healthcare person just for context and background. Um, so what we have, you know, where we started was our use case around COVID and that really, you know, slingshotted us forward with implementing a solution that works in a you know a co comprehensive ecosystem around verifiable credentials that intersect in the healthcare sphere. Um, as the COVID use case has diminished, we have several directions in which we can go and we think 
verifiable credentials would be valuable in the healthcare space. Um, but we haven't really isolated one as the main new direction. We have a couple, and those couple of use cases include, for example, um, drug testing for the purpose of verification of employment. Um, that's a good one because that's obviously very sensitive and private information, and you want to be able to control who you share it with, but also to eliminate duplicate drug tests. For example, um, we had talked about, you know, if you work for both Lyft and Uber, they may require drug testing and they each do it independently. Um, and so that would save save both the patient, but also the companies. Um, similarly, we had talked about other verifiable credentials, for example, for the purpose of school-based health and educational requirements, but also provider credentialing, right, where you have a whole bunch of criteria, whether it's school or employment, where there is an intersection with healthcare data. So, for example, if you work in a healthcare facility, you need to be TB tested on a regular basis. You might need certain immunizations like your annual flu shot. And so getting that data exchanged and, and um, incorporated into authorization for employment is a great application for, uh, for verifiable credentials in healthcare and the Cardia toolkit. And I don't know if you have anything you want to add to those uh, use cases or sort of where directionally we're investigating. So those use cases, I think, um, are illustrative of the capability, but are not by any means a limitation on what can be done. The um, Those use cases were selected because of the minimal amount of effort required to take what is already existing in the agents that are currently able to issue hold and verify medical um, credentials and with minimal modifications come up with additional use, uh, uses for the data besides the COVID testing, vaccinations, or exemptions that were supported previously. So that's the criteria used to select them, not based on most usefulness nor um, uh, viability in a particular market. So those are the the selection criteria that were used, what's simple, what's quick, to demonstrate that the technology can be expanded beyond uh, the current limited uh, use case that was um, targeted originally for uh, COVID travel. Correct. And our the schemas that we had drafted for those verifiable credentials included lab data generically, right, a lab test result. So for example, TB could fit into our existing infrastructure as could some other lab test if that were critical. Um, and then also immunization, again, neutrally. So if you, you know, we want to talk about a COVID vaccine or you want to talk about yellow fever for the purposes of travel, both of those would fit um, any or, of the vaccinations. Yeah, any of the vaccinations required for school attendance. Exactly. Uh, either at a university or uh, primary through, you know, K through 12 education. Both of those are um, covered as well, but the, we designed everything up front to be generic um, for the type of data, not specific to a particular um, disease or a particular uh, type of test. So it's generic tests results and generic immunizations are the two schemas that were initially put together and also exemption uh, schemas for um, whatever reasons uh, a vaccination might be exempted. Schema creation is uh, kind of a minimal effort. Uh, the trickiest part is defining what types of data fields you want to have included. And then once that's done in a basically a JSON format, you can uh, create new, new credential formats and new schemas for those credentials uh, very quickly. Correct. Yes, and right now we're working in a non-creds, um, which we, you know, we we did on purpose because there's the ability to control release of specific pieces of that information, right? Yeah. Select, One selective of, disclosure of revealing only certain attributes from the the credential, or predicate style proofs that that give a date greater than great equal equal to or less than any of those types of um, comparisons is a member of a set 
without revealing the actual values. Those are the types of um, privacy preserving features that the non creds schema signature style allows for um, in presentation of the data to preserve privacy among um, only those fields that need to be revealed. Yep, exactly. Yeah, and I was going to add, you know, there is, especially when we talk about the healthcare space, there's obviously, you know, those standards implemented by HL7, those, we have talked about integrating those um, and how we would work, for example, uh, other structures into credentials, but there's discussion around that that's needed to make sure that we can stay in the limited disclosure, the selective disclosure, excuse me, which we find so valuable. Um, so I do have, let me just bring up for the interest of buying our speaker another minute. Uh, or maybe not because she <laughs> maybe is not going to be able to attend today. <laughs> Wonderful. So let's take another minute then and I will just pull this up anyways. Um, and just facilitate, of course, some of this discussion. So. Uh, here are the components that exist today, and we have uh, the issuer agent, right, which is able to issue those credentials based on what we've just discussed. But again, as an agent, um, you know, there's there's room to expand on the formatting of those credentials that we've we've drafted to date. We have uh, the primary verifier agent as well, which uh, can do both the verification of a credential, but then also the issuance. In this case, it says trusted traveler, but this would be a derivative credential um, that would be passed back to the patient person uh, so that they're not having to then redisclose direct health information. So for example, it may be if we're talking about the um, school scenario, they may share with the nurse, age, you know, person agent, their health specific credential and the nurse gives them a credential that says you're cleared for school from a health perspective um, across a variety of requirements. Um, and then so then they would potentially have two credentials in their wallet at that point, right? The initial health credential plus the derivative credential. And then moving forward when they you know check in for school and they finish their registration, uh, they might verify that with a secondary agent, right? Maybe that's like the final enrollment check if we're just taking on the school model. Um, all of this is built on top of the schemas that we've drafted related to those specific credentials. Again, we have a few, but primarily a lab-based schema, but and also a, a vaccination or immunization schema. And it's all sitting and leveraging what was previously known as machine-readable governance, now known as decentralized uh, ecosystem system. governance. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> D E G. So that's a little bit about uh, sort of where where we've spent our time and the components of what we have today. Ken, do you have anything to add to, to this? It's uh, currently built on top of the Hyperledger Indie Networks because of the support for the, the non creds, but uh, other credential formats can be supported and other ledger types are, are also supportable. The, but we selected the most privacy preserving ones to kick off the work and uh, be able to demonstrate the highest level of um, security for um, the person's, the patient's data as they're, they're working with it. Because of the involvement in the, the uh, patient actually doing the sharing, they receive the credential, they share the credential, uh, consent is built into the transfer model to um, require the consent of the user before any data is shared. Um, looking further down the road, we looked at what are consent credentials that might uh, allow um, patients to authorize the sharing of their data or um, the use of their data in other ways for research or for other purposes that they can can also consent to. And, looking at a specific consent credentials that might be exchanged to uh, both um, provide the consent and then a receipt back indicating um, what consent has been recorded on, on behalf of an organization. 
Great. And because we have someone with us today, Elizabeth, who um, is sits in the payer space, right? One, for example, one use case here would be that the health plan is the issuer of a coverage credential, right? That could be then used um, or, uh, for example, you could also do like pre-authorization credentials. I think there's a lot of opportunity in the payer side, and I know that has um, there has been some activity in the healthcare sphere related to credentials in the health plan or health insurance um, sphere. Do you have, do you want to, not to put you on the spot here, but do you have um, ideas about how verifiable credentials fit into the payer space? Yeah, that's putting me on the spot. You'll have to oh, come to sorry. my meeting and ask me there. <laughs> okay. Thanks. I we look forward to engaging and and learning about what you guys are doing and your interest special interest group. Excellent. Um, okay. Well, that's a little bit of background on sort of what we've got today, where we're thinking this would go. Um, although we're open to exploring other applications for what we've built, whether it's a very easy transition like another immunization or lab based use case or if it's a slight pivot from that i think there's a lot that we could do with the toolkit that we have today um Keila, there one thing that i think i was talking to ken about earlier this week is um just the idea of having other um representatives from different parts of kind of the healthcare industry come and talk about their like challenges or experiences with um secure data flows um, and how Cardia could be applied. So one of the people that it are in that is in our um, kind of ecosystem is um, had successfully run a drug testing kind of startup and and um, had some experience with how to convey drug testing results from point A to point B to point C <laughs> um, from the, the the subject to the lab to the employer, et cetera. And so having them come and talk, I, if anybody, you know, if we're interested, I, I could extend an invitation to that person as well and see if they would want to come and talk about drug testing, because I know that was one of the, the extensions that we talked about um, for Cardia. Yes. And I believe that that was on our plan to have them as a guest speaker for two weeks the two weeks from today's meeting and hopefully we can i would like to see that uh continue as we're in this exploration phase to uh, bring in outside people so that we can assess their needs and how well the technology matches up with what they're trying to do to see if we're solving real world problems real world problems always make for a much more interesting and viable project. Um, I think we've got the technology and it solved a real world problem. Now let's see if we can expand that to a, a greater set. So um, let's see if we can get the invite um, over to our uh, person on the drug testing uh, side of things for um, basically corporate drug testing um, for employment. So I think that would be an interesting one. I think our shuffle today on our first meeting move may have caused a little bit of problems for our original guest speaker for today, but I think that having a, a slot of 15, 20, 25 minutes on allowed for various parties to come in and present what their real world problems are will help us um, better focus the work that we're doing. So I'd like to see a continued set of those as, as many as we can find who are interested and willing to share. Um, I was also introduced by the Hyperledger uh, uh, staff to the folks at the um, healthcare special interest group, and I couldn't remember at Hyperledger, I couldn't remember, did you guys present to them already in the past or no? Did we? Yeah. I don't think so. Ken and I talked about this the other day as well. Uh, I think we are planning to attend get a, so that we can get a feel for it and then potentially plan to present or further engage. Okay, cool. Yeah, I, uh, they had made that um, kind of outreach and introduction. So happy to pass that along uh, to you all um, so you can uh, work on next steps. <clears throat> Fantastic. I think, be, I think that would be ideal. That would um, 
let us become more familiar with what they're doing and then they can see what we have to offer and see if there's uh, any synergy there. I think there likely will be. And so we, I, Keila and I both feel like that would be a, um, a good introduction to make, a mutual introduction to make. Nice, I will um, reply and CC you guys uh, or add you to that thread. Um, I'll also just pop in the chat here the link to the blog that went out yesterday, the announcement blog um, that went out on the Hyperledger um, website. Let me hit everyone. There we go. Um, and so this is sort of the formal coming out uh, party for Cardia. Um, and uh, please feel free to share in your networks um, as well. It all it has links to um, many different things, <laughs> lots of links in there. But if you click on Cardi at the very first word of the very first sentence, it'll it'll go to that wiki page that has all the um, the meeting information. So that truly is the quickest one click um, way to join and start um, participating in the community. It's exciting to me to see the the different pieces of technology support and community support that Hyperledger's made available to us. It's a heck of a lot easier to to run the meetings and take the notes and get them published and the uh, getting the videos posted and everything. It just makes the uh, F, the overhead part of it be reduced so that we can focus on actually getting stuff done. I agree. I agree, very exciting. Um, however, I think one of the uh, victims of that transition of the overhead and all of the exciting stuff is that we didn't get our guest speaker onto this meeting today. So we apologize everybody in advance. We do have a guest speaker that we will have rescheduled. Um, she is not to spoil her introduction for the future, but uh, engaged in the immunization space specifically around the national US national network of immunization registries and some support services around that. So that's certainly an area that we've um, been looking at how it can support. I know personally working with those immunization registries, there's a lot of room for improvement. Um, and so we look forward to having her at a future scheduled meeting as uh, similarly as the drug uh, testing contact that we've mentioned here. So we've got those two guest speakers lined up. We'll continue to work on queuing up some others. If anybody has recommendations or can think of someone who might be valuable, please reach out to Ken or I or throw them in the chat now. Um, we'd love to get them on the docket for future meetings as we push both the who do, where where do we wanna position Cardia for the future um, in tandem with some of the technical updates that we're working on. All right, Ken, you have anything else you wanna add? Otherwise, maybe we'll give everybody back a little time. I think that it would be prudent to give people back um, time this week and uh, I think we can juggle between the two different speakers, um, find which one's best for in two weeks and which one would be best for uh, one month from now. So that we, uh, I, can, I don't think there's anything in particular that would preclude us from having either one speak in either slot. So let's see which one fits best for their schedules and uh, schedule appropriately. Excellent. Um, Elizabeth, you did have a question in the chat do we just want to try to discuss that quickly before we formally adjourn yes. uh yeah so i was kind of wondering if you're going to be adding to the erc 1155 that the climate group is finished or is still probably still working on the token um or if you're going to try to make your own tokens um because uh they should be multi-purpose and i think there's a soul bound aspect to this token, there's a locked NET function. Uh, I don't see any only owner function, but it looks like the auditor has different permissions from the emitter. And so my question is when you, you know, why not uh, use the same uh, token, if you can use the same ERC 1155 and maybe either add to that emissions token or I guess you, if you make it a different one, can you make it compatible at least? Um, can you look through the code there and make sure that it's compatible so that somebody who has, uh, say, health data and they want to use that in the future for, to get a carbon offset, they could do that swap using 
the code that's already been established? Or do you already have code that has been established that maybe the climate action people should be uh, trying to um, make sure that we're compatible with? Cardia itself has does not have any interaction with tokens at this point in time. Um, it is possible to facilitate that, but uh, we have not done anything to this point to either produce or consume uh, tokens. We have only verifiable credentials in the data model right now and uh, decentralized identifiers. So um, it's something we can take a look at, but it's not an area of our primary focus at, up to this point. So uh, looking at the link you have there, we can um, see, see what they've got and evaluate how it might interact with what's going on at Cardia. Okay, great. So we can maybe do that as a takeaway um, and come back with some thoughts, further thoughts on that at our next meeting. Is that fair, Ken? Yeah. Excellent. Okay. And I've added that, added that to our meeting notes as well. Okay, excellent. Well, with that said, we're going to, we'll adjourn early, give you all a little bit of time back. Apologies for uh, the mix up today. We look forward to ironing these out <laughs> moving forward. So very nice to meet those of you that are new faces and welcome. Thanks everybody. See you in two weeks. See you later.